who's won the event three times and is shooting for a fourth. Can he back-to-back -back twice? We check the Bayer brackets with Randy. Our first match, our wild card match, Dave Traber going against rookie Brian Kretzer. That winner will advance to meet Steve Jaros in our other semifinal match. Walter Ray Williams Jr. and Danny Wiseman. The wild card, of course, is the man with the best match play record that didn't qualify for the semifinals, so battle of right-handers. Illinois looking for PBA title number five strikes in the first. Dave Travers bringing the heater with him tonight. He likes to throw it straight and hard. Our first look at Brian Kretzer. 35-year-old rookie. And he opens up with a strike in the first. Right away, we see a big difference between the line Dave Travers playing and the line that Brian Kretzer's playing. Brian Kretzer's that deep inside line. Dave Travers throwing it much straighter. Said the key Brian did to making it through had to be that match last night. It was a dandy against Chris Barnes, huh? Chris Barnes opened in the 10th frame, opened the door for Brian. Brian needed the first strike in the 10th frame to advance, and he did it. Is what we call high flush. Let's check the footwork here. Deep hit side line sliding into the left gutter. My imagination, or does he have different colored toes? It's toes. different color shoes. <laughs> his uh, left shoe being a slide shoe, and his right shoe is a traction shoe. Oh, oh, right in the ropes. Give him the heater, Ricky. <laughs> Dave Traver, man, he just, he gets up there and just fires it. Told us last night the key was just making the top 32. After that, he just played his own game and defeated Parker Bone, who's here tonight in the crowd and watching. Well, you know, the, the thing about getting into the top 32 is if you don't make it, you don't get the match play. Once you're in the match play, anything can happen. As you can see, he smoked Parker 3-0. Lost out, as you saw in the round of eight, to Danny Wiseman, but he's here. To, he's here tonight. But you know, Danny Wiseman did bowl two three hundred two three hundred games against Dave last night. That's kind of tough to beat. Double and eight. Kretzer double working. Third frame. Just watch the deep inside line and watch this footwork. Can you throw it, Annie? Jesus. <laughs> Unusual footwork to say the least, huh? Yeah, not real happy with that shot. Ball dress high. Getting a break, just leaving the 3-6. Good move left on the approach to give him more angle to cover this spare. There's the two-tone look. Ask Brian, who hails from Dayton, how to describe what some would say was that Fred Astaire approach. Others might say, hey, it was Michael Jackson in the moonwalk. Oh, well, it's a combination of uh, taking seven steps originally in my normal approach but I get a, a stutter in there at times. I get going too slow or my timing gets messed up a little bit. And to compensate not stuttering and get out of timing, I just add steps. And as long as my swing falls in when it's supposed to, it doesn't matter how many steps I take to get to that point. It's just, it's essentially just getting there. It's a timing mechanism. Sorry, Jim, the key for Brian Kretzer, forget about how many steps he's taken. It could be 20. The bottom line is when the ball enters the swing with the right foot. 
playing in between the fifth and sixth there on the left side. 27th board. That's Speaking of timing, how do you spend his day? Well, he's also a loan processor. So he spends his day, most of his days working. <laughs> Braver on track. Dave Traber went high on this left lane in the third frame. Normally most people would move left. Dave Traber's adjustment is just more speed. He get ready for this Johnny Petraglia open. He went back and looked at old tapes, and he worked on lane conditions that would, in his mind, be identical to what he expected here, but he worked at a 39, not 40 feet. Well, you know, Jim, he also got trapped. The uh, last couple of years, he's been trying to hook it, which just isn't his game. Like you said, he looked at tapes. He went home. He went back to what he does best, like going straight. Gets his leverage off that right foot that he's been struggling a little bit of late. Winning tonight would mean everything. 40,000 to our champion, but that's still about 90 minutes away. Today's live ESPN coverage of the PBA Tours Johnny Petraglia Open is being brought to you by Bayer Aspirin. Take it for pain, take it for life by Miller High Life, the champagne of beers, and by Dexter, the number one bowling shoe in the world. PBA Tours rolled live to North Brunswick, New Jersey. The PBA Hall of Famer, the Johnny Petraglia Open. When we left you, it was just about even, Kretzer and Traber. David left it open, or Brian was open in the fifth, then came back and struck in the sixth. David with a strike in the sixth. <laughs> Folks are reacting to what they're seeing on the screen overhead. One of the fans saw themselves on one of our screens and pretty surprised by that. Look at the pin action there. Yeah, Dave saw the heater. He's, you know, the lanes are tough. A lot of times the best, the best way to attack the lane condition is throwing it straight. Watch this pin action. He's got pins airborne. That was a big double for Dave in the sixth and seventh frame. Now Brian Kretzer working on a strike in the sixth. So the key to him for this match, one of the keys, Randy, would be the hand-eye coordination. And with his positioning, the hand is a lot closer to the yeah, close. Great shot there, Brian. Close. What Brian does, Jim, is he looks at the foul line instead of looking at the arrows. And what that does, he says, last night he told us it's easier for him to hit his target, bringing his target that much closer to him. What did he say about his footwork? It's a walking debacle. Yeah. <laughs> he, he throws that little stutter step in there, that timing step. But the, the main thing you need to look at is once the ball enters the swing, that's where the timing kicks in. As long as it enters the swing at the right time with his right foot, he's going to be in pretty good time. Well, you hit that one. I'll give you that. God. <laughs> Brian, you heard him say it. He overhit that shot. As you watch him play the extreme inside line, 29th board on the left side of the lane. And the ball didn't get far enough right because, like he said, he overhit it, which makes the ball grab the lane that much sooner. The ball never pushed far enough to the right. His own words, I mean, he has a Chuck Knobloch-like problem, doesn't he? Yeah, that little hitch in there, that little stutter step. But you know what? He's, he's done quite well with that, and he's worked it out within his own game. And he's, you know, he allows it to work for him rather than against him. And how Dave Traber has done on the PBA Tour this year in Peoria. The round of 64 missed the cut in Nashville and ditto in Indy. Taking it to him. Brian gave Dave Traber an opening, and Dave Traber took advantage of it. This ball is dead flush. And watch this reaction. Oh, yeah. Parents are watching in Cedarburg, Wisconsin. Melissa watching in Woodstock, Illinois. Yeah! 
Dave spelled a really smart game. When he didn't strike, he left him spares that he could make. This ball is going to be in the swish zone. That's where it's just a little bit right of the head pin. When he missed the cut, Nashville and Indy, when he was having a problem this year, he was struggling. His arms were tightened up. And he said he couldn't repeat a shot ever. It's hard to get it off your hand when you're tense. The pins react to when you're squeezing it or when you're grabbing it at the bottom of the swing. Went home, practiced real hard, practiced on tough lane conditions because that's what he knew he was going to be bowling on out here on tour. After leaving the eight -ball. Great story here because Brian is working on a scholarship fund that is named after his dad, Bob, who was known and loved by bowlers everywhere simply as senior, but there are two young recipients, Lindy Coolis and Sean Burkett. In fact, Sean's going to Nebraska this year, and he's got a scholarship fund in his dad's name all set up. Brian, it's a great thing that he's doing back home in Dayton, asking the players on tour to donate shirts, bowling balls, what have you. He auctions them off, and the recipients of the two year olds of Dayton. Has a scholarship fund in the Dayton area for junior bowlers, and his goal eventually is to be able to pay for all four years of a college education. Mathematically, it is basically over. And Dave Kramer will advance to face Steve Yaros in one of the semifinal matches. We've got Danny Wiseman, Walter Ray Williams in the first semifinal match coming up. Brian Kretcher is going to take this experience with him for the remainder of the season. Learn from it, build on it. Obviously bowled a lot better than that to advance this far in the tournament. Opened up with a double in one and two. Just a real solid game. He's only missed the pocket once. That was the third frame. Strikes out. He can shoot 237. Into the semifinal match. But he'll have a little bit of a wait because Wiseman and Hall of Famer Walter Ray Williams Jr. going for his 34th PBA title. And how about making the TV show three straight weeks? Yeah. 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 No With luck anymore. No luck. Well, we know what mom and dad back in Wisconsin are doing, watching their son as he advances. We check the bear brackets. Randy and I come right back live to North Brunswick, New Jersey. Stick around. Wiseman, Walter Ray, next. All right, ladies and gentlemen, another hand for Brian Kretzer. Brian Kretzer. All right, folks, this looks to be a great Midtown Manhattan, New York City, and what a skyline on a nice Tuesday night. You come about 25 miles through the Lincoln or the Holland Tunnel. The New Brunswick, New Jersey, and Johnny Petraglia Open. Well, we get terrific action here. One of the matches is over. The 